In this lesson, we will be discussing how to build an application. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to recall the three ways to build an application, state the suggested method for QSPs to build an application, and demonstrate how to build based on a provided use case. Now that you understand the essential principles of modeling a QuickBase application, it's time that we walk through the actual process of building an application. To be clear, there are three different ways that you can build a QuickBase application. As a member of one of our QuickBase solution providers, we expect that you would develop the largest majority of your applications from scratch. So this is what we will be discussing in this section. Please remember, however, that applications can also be built by importing a spreadsheet or by jumpstarting the development using a template from the exchange. Building an application from scratch is the preferred method of most developers because it allows the admin to specify exactly what tables, fields, and relationships should be built. Using the design developed in the previous section, we will now walk through the development of this section of the data model. Starting from our My Apps page in QuickBase, we will select the Create a New App link on the right side of the page. In this pop-up, we are presented with the three methods we discussed earlier, Exchange, Importing, and Building from Scratch. For our lesson, we will be selecting the link at the bottom, Build a New App from Scratch. We've now landed on the Add a New QuickBase Application page and can begin defining our tables, fields, and relationships. Before we do that, however, let's go ahead and give this application a name by changing the data in the Application Name field to Top Level Event Services. We've named our application and can now begin defining our tables. First, select, in, select inside the records field on the table number one row. Our first table will be clients, so that is what we will enter in this field. We are not going to define the fields just yet, so we won't select that button. We will just move on to the Add a Table button below the Table Name column. Notice that once we've added a second line for another table, the table name has been updated to reflect the name we placed in the Records column. We will now repeat this same process for Contacts and Events. For Venues, we will be utilizing a different method of adding tables so we will skip it for the moment. Once we've completed this first step, we can turn our attention to defining the fields for each table. On the Clients table, we will be using Client Name, Client Website, and Client Address for our fields. Select the Define Fields button and we will be presented with a pop-up with two columns, Field Label and Field Type. Field Label will be the name of the field and Field Type will determine the type of data that is stored in the field. Our first field will be Client Name and for this field we will select the field type of Text. Next, we will create the Client Website field. Since the information in this field needs to be presented as a link, we will need to select a field type of URL. QuickBase has numerous different field types that make working with the data very easy. Lastly, we need to create our Client Address field. 
Address is another special field type that is available to us in the field type dropdown. This field will actually allow the user to search for a verified address using Google and will present a map of the address. Once we're done here, we will select OK to close the pop-up. We will now repeat this process for contacts. Since there is a different process for adding fields and relationship after this initial setup, we'll be using that process for events and venues. We now have three tables, two with fields, and we can now set up one of our relationships. It's always a good idea to create relationships after adding fields to a table, so we'll only be creating two relationships on this page. Select the Add a Relationship button, and a new section below our tables will appear. Each line in this section represents a relationship between two tables, with the master or parent table on the left, and the details or child table on the right. For our first relationship, we will be connecting clients to contacts, making sure to select contacts in the details dropdown, as we've designed our application so that each client can have many contacts. We will repeat this process for the contacts to events relationship. We've gone as far as we can on this page, so we will now select the green Create button at the bottom left and will be taken into the newly created application. Once we're in the application, we can see our tables listed at the top in the button bar. Currently, we have three tables in our application, Clients, contacts, and events. To create our venue table, we will use this new table button at the far right of the button bar. When we select this button, a pop-up window comes up and we can name the table. This will be venues. Next, we need to decide what each record will be called. Most of the time, the name of the table and the record will be similar, with the table being the plural and the record being the singular. We'll be using Venue for our records. We now have an option to select an icon that will represent our table in the button bar, as well as enter a description of the table if we wish. Once we're done on this page, we'll select the green Create button. We've named our table and selected our icon and are now taken to another pop-up window. This window allows us to select our fields and field types very similarly to how we did it using the guided interface earlier. We'll be creating fields for name, location, and phone number. Our field types for these will be text, address, and phone number. Once we've completed our fields on the pop-up, we'll select the Add button and we'll be taken to our field list for the table we've just created. If we need to add new fields to an existing table, we can use the New Fields button at the top right of this page. Please take note that five additional fields are listed for our tables. Date created, date modified, record ID number, record owner, and last modified by. These fields provide essential information about the record created and the record ID number acts as the unique identifier for each record. Now that we have all four of our tables, we need to build the relationships between venues and events. 
since we are already on the field list for venues, we can start here. From the list of links on the left side of our page, we will select Table to Table Relationships. This will take us to a page where we can see all relationships for our chosen table. For venues, we can see that there are no existing relationships. To build the relationship between venues and events, we will select the New Relationship button. The first page that we are taken to resembles the section in the guided interface where we selected the tables to be related. On this page, however, one side is already selected for us, Venues. In the drop-down on the right, we will select the table to build a relationship to, which will be Events. We'll select the next button at the top right to be taken to step two of the process. Here, we will select the direction in which our relationship should flow. For our example, we need each venue to be able to host multiple events, so we will select the first option. It is important to pay close attention to this page. If we do not and choose the wrong option, we will need to delete the relationship later and build a new one. Again, select the Next button and we will be taken to Step 3 of the relationship process. On this page, we can see how the relationship will be structured and what QuickBase is going to build in addition to the relationship. On the left side of this page, we see the master or parent table, Venues. This section shows that QuickBase has identified Record ID Number as the key field of that table and will be creating two new fields for us. The first is a formula URL field called Add Event and will be displayed as a button. The second is a report link field that will display an embedded report of all events when looking at an individual venue record. On the right side of the page is our details or child table events. Here we see the first field is labeled reference field and has a drop down with related venues selected. This field is what QuickBase will use to connect to an appropriate parent record. Below this, we have three drop-downs labeled Lookup Field. Lookup fields allow us to pass information from the parent record to the child record and will be discussed in more detail in our lesson entitled Moving Data Between Tables. One thing we do need to know, however, is that the first lookup field is used as a proxy. A proxy is a piece of information that is used in place of the reference field so that users can select from a list of more useful information rather than having to select from a list of record ID numbers. In this example, we would select venue name as the proxy so that when a user needs to assign a venue, they will be able to select by name rather than number. The remaining fields we can leave blank. Once we're done here, we will select the Create button at the top right and be taken back to our Relationships page. We now have four tables in our application and have created relationships based on our original design. To create the rest of this design, we would simply repeat the processes we've discussed in this lesson for each table. This concludes our lesson on how to build a QuickBase application. You should now be able to recall the three ways to build an application, state the suggested method for QSPs to build an application, and demonstrate how to build based on a provided use case.